Hello everyone. Today the topic is about regulation of enzyme activity. First is allosteric regulation. So in addition to the active site, other sites present on the enzyme are called as allosteric sites. So in Greek, allos meaning other. So this this is an enzyme and this is the active site. And in addition to the active site, if another site is present, and that particular site is called as allosteric site. And the enzymes which have this allosteric site are called as allosteric enzymes. Allosteric effectors. Now, whatever effectors that bind to this allosteric site are called as allosteric effectors or allosteric modulators, and they bind to this site and they regulate the enzyme activity. Positive allosteric sites are those that increase the enzyme activity. and negative allosteric modulators are those that decrease the enzyme activity any substance which is binding to this allosteric site is called as an allosteric modulator and this allosteric modulator if it is increasing the enzyme activity it is called as positive and if it is decreasing the enzyme activity it is called as negative so examples for allosteric modulators glycolysis and gluconeogenesis both of which are reciprocally regulated if we see this uh, inhibitor citrate this acts as an allosteric negative allosteric modifier of this enzyme phosphofructokinase 1 which is a key enzyme in glycolysis and therefore by inhibiting this enzyme glycolysis is inhibited similarly the citrate if this acts as a positive uh, allosteric modulator of this enzyme fructose 16 biphosphatase or bisphosphatase and by positively or uh, stimulating this enzyme gluconeogenesis is initiated Next is feedback inhibition. This is a specialized type of allosteric inhibition. This process of inhibiting the first step by the final product in a series of enzyme catalyzed reaction. This is called as feedback inhibition. So if you see enzyme one, uh, enzyme two, this is the beginning of the metabolic pathways, and you will see the formation of an intermediate, intermediate, and finally you see the product. And each of this enzyme is reaction is catalyzed by a separate enzyme. and the product when it is itself is inhibiting the first enzyme of this particular metabolic reaction that is called as feedback inhibition process of inhibiting the first step by the final product so this final product is inhibiting the first step in a series of metabolized enzyme catalyzed reactions feedback inhibition or end product inhibition is necessary to control the metabolic pathway for efficient metabolic function now this particular in type of inhibition this saves the cell from wasteful expenditure so this example if we see aspartate plus carbamyl phosphate uh, in this we the ctp is the final product citidine triphosphate and this particular product ends if this inhibits this enzyme aspartate transcarbamylase by feedback inhibition so that the formation of ctp is stopped next is the activation of latent enzymes is another example or another type of uh, regulation of enzyme activity one uh, the latent enzymes as such are inactive and they have to be activated for any particular reaction to occur so one such example is pro enzymes so pro enzymes or zymosins they are actively they are present uh, in inactive state as such and they become activated by irreversible peptide bond breakage for example pepsinogen to pepsin or trypsinogen to trypsin another method of activation of latent enzymes is interconversion of inactive to active enzymes by reversible covalent modification phosphorylation and dephosphorylation oxidation and reduction of disulfide bonds is are some examples of reversible covalent modification example is glycogen phosphorylase is the active enzyme in glycogenolysis which undergoes phosphorylation and dephosphorylation for its activation and inhibition next conversion of inactive to active occurs with the help of hormones example cyclic amp is actively involved in the activation or of these enzymes so these are some of the uh, methods by for of activation of latent enzymes one is by irreversible peptide bond breakage the other is by reversible covalent modification and also with the help of hormones examples where we can see glycogen phosphorylase this occurs is present in an inactive state which undergoes activation by phosphorylation so this is a covalent modification and succinate dehydrogenase when it undergoes reduction it becomes active so oxidized form is inactive and in reduced form is active 
glycogen synthase glycogen synthase as such is active and when it undergoes phosphorylation when a phosphate group is added it becomes inactive so these are covalent modification example phosphorylation and dephosphorylation and oxidation and reduction so next one is compartmentalization this is another method of regulation of the enzyme activity so one way to allow reciprocal regulation between catabolic and anabolic process to much to achieve maximum economy is by compartmentalization examples enzyme for fatty acid synthesis are found in cytosol whereas enzyme for fatty acid oxidation are present in mitochondria so this presence uh, of the enzymes uh, of catabolic and anabolic processes at various places or different places help in uh, achieving the regulation of enzyme activity next control of enzyme synthesis is also one method of regulating the enzyme activity the amount of the enzyme directly controls the velocity of the reaction and that is catalyzed by that enzyme rate limiting enzymes are present in low concentration and they have very short half life so rate limiting step is the slowest or the irreversible step in a pathway which determines how fast the whole pathway can be carried out increased synthesis of the enzymes is called as induction for example insulin increases glycogen synthase glucokinase phosphofructokinase which ultimately increase the utilization of glucose that is what is the function of insulin and repression is called as de repression is decreased synthesis of enzymes so by controlling the incre induction and repression there will be regulation of the enzyme activity next is enzyme degradation all enzymes have half lives it is in days while others are in hours or in minutes so ldh4 it has a half life of 5 to 6 days ldh1 has half life of 8 to 12 hours and amylase have half life of 3 to 5 hours so this also helps in regulation of the enzyme activity next isoenzymes the presence of isoenzymes itself also help in regulating multiple forms of the same enzyme are called as isoenzymes or isozymes they have different structure but identical function these isoenzymes are tissue specific but help in the regulation of enzyme activity they help in understanding disease of different organs examples isoenzymes of lactate dehydrogenase and cpk so these are all the different types of uh, regulation of enzyme activity allosteric regulation feedback inhibition activation of latent enzymes compartmentalization control of enzyme synthesis and isoenzymes thank you